Happy Thursday. Uh, so today we're going to be going over, uh, or rather continuing to talk about containers uh, and specifically looking into uh, Podman uh, for its security as well as uh, overall value uh, in allowing for the deployment uh, of generative AI microservices. Uh, so whenever you hear container, and AI, in relative to the same sentence, think of microservices, uh, which really, probably a better way, or a helpful way to look at it, yesterday we talked about it from a car, or uh, just overall um, engine. Uh, instead, I would say, think of it like a bento box. Uh, so those little box lunches uh, that you see in You've been over to, uh, to like Japan, Korea, or you've seen on TV. You see these little boxes that happen to have these little compartments uh, that have like, the rice and the egg and you know, some fish, whatever. But the purpose is that and the point is is that it these different little compartments uh, can in a lot of ways reflect the microservices uh, architecture because by themselves, they're all contained in one overall box, right? So if you go get sushi, uh, you've seen those different bento boxes. It's always one big box, but then it's all those little boxes, and you eat them together, and that makes up the meal, made up of many small servings, uh, but all considered part of the meal, all having a role in part of that meal, making it delicious. Uh, so too, the same way that microservices uh, in the space of generative AI, they are working together uh, when done right to be able to have multiple different features all come together. Uh, it's not going to be delicious necessarily, but it's intended to uh, build on each other and to support uh, towards an overall full stack application, or at times even full stack applications, plural. Uh, so all that being said, uh, we had another uh, reset that we had to end up going through, so super fun with that. But you know, we just turn lemonade, or turn lemons into lemonade each time. So we can, we always check uh, the APT uh, update and then APT upgrade. Just to make sure that we clear. So we're going to open up our code editor and whatever code editor you want to use is all fine and dandy. And so we're going to, uh, or excuse me, yesterday, right, we left off with, uh, we installed, so to install Podman. And then we do the sudo, super user do. So you can see, for me, using the APT, uh, the advanced package uh, tool, I say. I was getting my interns about knowing how to, what things stand for, so I know that. Uh, but that is what Ubuntu uh, uses, so this operating system uses to install and manage things, so that everything is on the correct version. So you can install a higher end version, a more recent version, uh, using like GitHub, but there is challenge in being able to just get all that. The nice thing is that the APT uh, with Ubuntu will let you, uh, you can just write sudo apt install, uh, and there's a few other ones, but it will allow, it will manage all those versionings for you and make sure everything meshes together. So uh, we're also going to make sure we install sudo apt install uh, podman compose. So uh, Podman and Docker and really containers, when we think of them, they are great by themselves, uh, but there is the challenge a lot of times comes from the fact that you have to you know, write a Docker file or a container file that has the integration that basically you write the entire, at a high level, you write the, all the different dependencies, all the operating system and everything, and then you do that each and every time. Uh, so there's this great tool called Pod or 
Docker Compose and now Podman Compose uh, that allows you to use a what's called a YAML file. So if I can remember what that is, YAML being yet another markdown language, more correctly. Uh, but it lets you use a, a compose.yaml file to think of it like sheet music. Uh, so uh, let's go do, do, do. So I'm going to click, uh, and we're going to do this. So uh, it's like I'm doing some stuff trying out with Olama, and so we put the version here. And then we have the services that we're going to be running. Uh, and with this, though, so this is, seems like a lot, and uh, there's still things to you know, I'm working on with it. Um, but the nice thing is that there's also tools uh, in this to be able to help if you're not sure. Like, I've been sometimes about, OK, am I actually making the correct configuration here? So, uh, so, sorry, pause real quick. So when you see, uh, you'll see sometimes YAML, so Y-A-M-L or Y-M-L, they're both uh, configuration files. Uh, but typically for the actual, for Docker Compose or Podman Compose, which, let's see, install Docker Compose. Do, 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 do. Now, lift that one up. Do, do, do. OK, so I already have that one. Uh, and if you're going to install Docker from the command line, is it docker.io? Uh, and yes, you can install. There's bigger packages and more uh, robust things you can do. Docker desktop, or you can install Docker Podman desktop, w whatever is your flavor. Uh, to me, I want to prioritize the amount of memory that I'm going to be using. And if, so if I can, just interact with things in the command line, then I save myself memory on my computer because, or whatever machine I'm using, which just overall means more, I can do more things with it. And if I'm storing less, I'm using less energy. So good for the planet and for your uh, bank account. Uh, but please don't feel that you need to use the command line uh, for everything. It's, it's not about what's the best programming language, the best uh, development environment, the best code editor. Uh, best is relative. It matters on what are the tools that are most conducive to you doing what whatever it is you need to do. Uh, if effectively all have similar capabilities, uh, so it's just something to consider. So. The delineation for containers, uh, in this case though, because I keep on coming back to it, is Podman allows for, uh, really coming out of the box, for a rootless or daemonless configuration. And yes, if, if they can end up having, if you don't do the right configuration with it, where it, oh, it can be set, or if you don't specifically turn it to being operating rootless, it can be rootful, uh, linked with system D. But the purpose is that if one sets it up correctly, and really for both of them, but Podman is meant is built with this, this configuration at its core versus an extra feature, you can get uh, you can have the extra security features uh, that comes from running things without direct access to the root of your computer system. So. And so when we think of Compose, think of a composer, so a conductor. Uh, so when you think of, right, so Compose is as in you are standing in front of an orchestra and you are telling it each of these services, OK, you're going to do this. And you are effectively writing out the sheet music that then ends up will create as many different services or incorporate as many different part or aspects of the orchestra uh, as you compose. And so uh, with that, though, 
again, it's difficult to know, are you doing the right thing? Are you configured correctly? So what we do is YAML, so sudo apt install YAML lint, so Y-A-M-L-L-I-N-T. And so we want to make sure that we have that. Uh, and then once we do, so YAML lint, and some people would say it's YAML, Y-A-M-L. Uh, some people would say, you know, you don't need a, a in there, so it's just YML. Typically, uh, whatever program you're using will pick up either. So, dealer's choice, doesn't really matter. All right, so sudo, oh no, YAML lint. So it's Y-A-M-L. L -I -N -T, in this case because that is the package that we downloaded not just a random file configuration naming convention uh, and then compose.yaml so the nice thing is that right, it actually will tell you oh you you know made this error here so line 6 6 there's an error here where apparently it was expecting uh, four indentations but found five so it's Excited there. So we'll do that. And then let's give it another go. YAML lint compose.yaml. Hey, look at that. Uh, and so that will just help us to be able to make sure that the formatting is correct. Uh, and linting being just, I think of like a, you know, like my wife will take the lint off from my jacket. Uh, think of it kind of like that. Uh, it's just going through and saying, all right, are there any errors here? Uh, there we go. Uh, but super useful tool that I, I just found out about pretty recently. So I wanted to share it because the kind of like the purpose of all this is that we all build good things together. Uh, and I have definitely learned a lot from folks just being very open on putting their stuff out there. And so I would be remiss if I did not do my little best to repay that in kind. Uh, so we'll continue to be building out with Podman here for the purpose of having uh, generative AI microservices that can take uh, different models and containerize them in a way that uh, makes them accessible. So, right, because, nope, like Olama is a phenomenal example. So uh, we have Tiny Llama. Uh, end up downloading that people typically think it's right so it's a smaller model uh, 1.1 to 3.1 billion parameters uh, but the fact that we can, we can quantize it and turn it into 637 megabytes I mean that's nuts that's nuts and the fact that you can then right llama run tiny llama and you know is it going to be as good as GPT-4 I mean no uh, can you please tell me um, a joke? But you know, at the same time, that's running for free, and it's 637 megabytes. I mean, that's pretty good. And the fact that models are just going to be getting smaller and better and require less compute. Uh, while people are, of course, saying, hey, we're going to build bigger and bigger, and you, right? That, that's, that's all fine and dandy, right? If you're Google or NVIDIA or Microsoft, right? I mean, you're leading the charge. Um, but for you know, us down here in the cheap seats, I think there's really a lot of great promise in being able to take uh, that positive, that, finding the answer to that question of what is the smallest amount of compute, the smallest amount of data, the smallest viable model that's online, hardware, software, data, uh, domain expertise, training, that then allows for this agentic framework. Uh, so we think of AI agents, think of AI models, so large language models, small language models, small, large, multimodal models that effectively are given tools. Uh, so we think of things like API calling, so application program interface calling, that an AI model that has a tool now reaching out to go and do something outside of just itself or it's doing a function call of now it's interacting with something else so to have a bunch of these little agents a bunch of little less than half a gig AI models I can just work in tandem together run on anybody's computer not 
a thousand GPUs. Uh, that's that's pretty great. The fact that people we can, you know, if if done correctly, if done with good intention, and if done with guardrails. So there's still lots of work to do, but uh, I think I'm it's really exciting to see just what how we can put quality information uh, into people's hands and what they'll do with that to, uh, as they you know, gain autonomy uh, for themselves and help define their own futures. Uh, it's it's going to be really exciting. I'm looking forward to that, uh, that future. All right, so uh, the takeaways from this is uh, rehashing again, how do we install Podman? Uh, how do we install Podman Compose? Why is that important? Because it allows you to compose, use the word in the definition, uh, but allows you to create a, think of again that sheet music where you can have multiple different uh, services that can run together and then in concert. Uh, whether, again, I know I shifted the metaphor of Bentabox or Fossil Little pieces or orchestra with your the conductor, whatever meets your fancy, right? That doesn't matter. Um, just different ways, different things that kill different people. Uh, so, and Podman being the rootless uh, sibling to Docker, they both work containers, but Podman just is more conducive to that more, that secure posture, uh, which is doable in Docker, just takes more effort. I'm lazy. Uh, so, then we talked about what it is to what a YAML file is so yet another markdown uh, language if I remember correctly I will make sure if I, if I was wrong on that I'm sure my interns will never let me hear the end of it as they should because uh, it matters when we when we're being specific on something uh, and so talked about the YAML file a compose.yaml being conduced being part of what you use for a, a docker compose uh, or podman compose in this case and then how to use a YAML lint. So if you're using Ubuntu uh, or operating system, and there's lots of different ways to be able to get that. You can just Google YAML lint uh, and lots of different ways, but the purpose of it being just some or a way to then run uh, a linter that can help you to determine if there's any issues with your compose.yaml file as you're putting it on. If you go to GitHub, most different options to check out. Uh, one's made much better than mine because right, people are doing amazing stuff out there. Just, just sort of bebopping around here, uh, or, you know, more or less. Uh, but I think it, it, again, it's really important to uh, share and to put out quality uh, for the quality that has been given, uh, that I've received uh, from folks, and also to again, reflect that in, in the level that we're working on. It's not about how much how much code you can write? It's not about the language. Uh, my personal opinion, it is about how do you align all those things together? Your knowledge, the right programming language, whatever it is, you know, the right tools, the right uh, area, the right market, and the right timing. Aligning all those together uh, in a way that is sustainable and hopefully profitable. That is. Uh, that's where the real magic is, uh, more than just, oh, look at this amazing idea. It's like, well, nobody else wants it, and how amazing is it really? Uh, so I believe this one's helpful, and uh, I will see you in the next one.